And we will turn that over to you now, Larry. They told me I'm not allowed to run around, so I don't know what I'm going to do. So I have to stand here in one spot. Uh, that's kind of rare for me. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Um, I had a ch uh, one of my kids. Everybody have one of those children that just was a little bit more hard-headed than the rest of them? Did you have one or did you know one that was? Well, I had one. Um, we called him the Colinator. Um, his name was Colin, and he just pushed my wife to every limit she possibly could. And one time, I was telling him to, to sit down. I said, I'm going to do is sit down. And he looked at me and said, no. I said, son, you need to sit down. He looked at me and just shook his head. I said, son, do you want to get spanked? Finally, he sat down, and he looked at me just as serious as he could. He says, I'm sitting but I still think I'm standing. <laughs> Have we done that in our lives where we commit to something, but maybe we don't totally commit? I know today is we're celebrating, or near celebrating the 4th of July, but a lot of times when I speak, I speak of something that has happened in my life or I've seen in somebody else's life. And I have had something that's happened to me and has really pushed me to a limit that I didn't know I had. And it's been something that's really been tough on me. And the Lord has given me the opportunity to do something I thought and wondered what would happen. I remember years ago when there was a shooting at one of the schools. And I read this article about this father who forgave the people that did the shooting and killed his daughter. And I sat there and wondered, could I do that? Could I actually forgive somebody? I know I'm supposed to be strong in faith and everything, but at some point, do I totally believe I could do that? Well, let me read you something at the beginning. It said, do not judge. It's in Matthew 7. Do not judge or you will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. With the, me with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Well, sometimes when the time comes and we have to realize when something happens. I was at, does anybody know what Walk to Maze is? Okay, I don't know if you've been on it or part of it. I was finally convinced to go on Walk to Maze. I was one of these stubborn human beings that I wasn't going. My wife had gone, I said, I'm not going. I felt like when people would talk to me about it, they were saying like, if you don't go on a Walk to Maze, you can't really be a Christian. I said, ah, oh, no. I can still be a Christian without Walk to Maze. So I was kind of stubborn. And then the part about what they told me where they take your phone and your watch and everything, I'm like, it's a little eerie now. So I got a little concerned about it. But I finally got convinced and I went. And during the whole course of this week or three days, they preached the grace of God and the forgiveness of God and how much God forgives us for what we do and the sins that we have committed. And I got to think, well, this is really neat. I understand this. And, you know, I know I'm forgiven. And I don't know why they're telling me over and over here again. I know that, you know. And is this for people that don't quite understand this? You know, as we read the Lord's Prayer, I mean, it basically says, forgive us our sins as forgive those who sinned against us. So that's part of our belief is we have to forgive as, as God has forgiven us. Because without forgiveness, we are nothing. And so I'm thinking, well, you know, I've heard people have said something about me and called me a name or, you know, my brother used to call me fatty and I was 6'3 and weighed 145 pounds. I didn't quite understand why I deserved fatty, but that's what he <laughs> called me. So, you know, I forgave him. I forgave people that did this and this. Well, that walked to Emmaus. There's a point in time on the last day that they let you sit down and these people send letters to you. And these letters tell you, you know, a lot of them tell you how great you are, build you up, make you feel like you're so super and everything. Well, I got one letter. And it was a letter telling me that something awful had happened to one of my children. And I didn't know it. So at that time, I was totally upset. I was to the point of rage. And 
I know now that God sent me to walk to Emmaus for one main reason. Because the only time I could have been told this was while I was there. There was a reason that I was there was I had to be told this and I got told at this time. So I sat there and I'm thinking, well, what do I do now? God tells us so many times in the Bible that forgiveness, that we have to forgive and we have to be like Him in forgiveness. And I went through this whole three or four days thinking I knew what I was doing. I was forgiving people. At this point I had to learn totally what forgiveness was. And at that point, with people around me, and with all this, there was this light. And people talk about, you know, I live almost 60 years, and I said, well, God's talked to me, but he's never slapped me. And he's been slapping me lately because I sometimes don't pay attention to the tap on the shoulder. And so now I'm sitting here thinking, how do I do this? How do I do what I've talked about other people doing? And when I tell people, oh, you have to forgive me. This was something that I could never imagine ever happening. To a member of my family. And so I got there and I said, okay. I took a little piece of paper because after that you have to go in front of everybody. And you have to speak. You have to say, what did Walk the Maze mean to you? Well, I'm totally torn up. I, I can't even think. So I took a little piece of paper, and I wrote down on this piece of paper a little statement so when it got to be my time, because I knew I wouldn't remember anything, that I would say, well, Walk to Maze has helped me to understand that I don't have total control of my life. And go sit down. Because I knew I wouldn't know what to say. And I didn't want to be the one person that, you know, looked like he wasn't doing anything or staying off to the side. So, I got up there, and I got my piece of paper. And I said this years ago about a youth minister that while we were in Washington, D.C., um, we met up with him, and I, I joked with him about um, he wanted to talk to the kids. He said, oh, just be a minute. He said, you know, I just want to talk to him for a couple minutes. Well, he proceeded to preach a 25-minute sermon, which was, you know, I figured out was going to happen. Well, at this time, you know, I sat there and I looked at this piece of paper. And I said, no, God put, here for, put me here for a reason. And I can't tell you what I said. I have no idea what I said. But I talked about the ultimate gift that God has given to us. He has forgiven us of what we have done wrong. How am I now to go on through life, and especially on to the next steps of the life that I have taken, and me not forgive this person who did this? It was real eye-opening. Like I said, I had no idea what I said. To this day, I couldn't tell you what I said. But last week at the annual conference, this lady come up to me, and she tapped me on the shoulder. She said, were you at the last walk to Emmaus? I said, yes, ma'am, I was. She said, I want to tell you something. That talk that you gave made me go home and forgive somebody I had not forgiven. I said, well, something happened to me really tough that during She said, we realized that. And then I looked down, she had a little badge, a little name cap on, and she was a minister. And I thought, there's a purpose to why I'm out here talking about this. I know God didn't let this happen so that I can do this. But there's something that had to come from this. If one person goes away and forgives somebody that they didn't forgive, I totally understand now what forgiveness is. I'm still working on it. I'm not sitting here now and telling you that I have just totally dealing with this subject and it's all taken care of. Because I happen to run into this person. Ran into him at church service. While I was speaking, he walked in. And I started to shake.
Forgiveness is one of the greatest things God has given us. No matter what we do, God will forgive us. People, we just want to strive to be like God. We can't be like We can't be like Jesus. But we can strive to. Go out and forgive somebody. Tell them they're forgiven. There's stages that I read, and I just want to read these to you. And I don't know if I can follow them all, but somebody wrote in a thing and said there's four steps to forgiveness. First of all, we have to recognize that we're forgiven. I got past that one. I knew that one. The second one is to release the offender from their debt. I'm working on that. The next one is accept people for who they are. And don't hold them to your own needs. We have to accept people for who they are. We were just talking earlier that most of our churches are getting ready to go through a very tough time and an issue that's going around right now and it's, it's going to be a tough time for all churches. Accept people for who they are. View people we have forgiven as tools in our lives. And I think that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to use this experience to try to help other people and be a tool in my life to hopefully help you and other people. And then finally, which I don't know if I'll ever make number five, I'd like to say I could make reconciliation with the person. I don't know. That one may not happen. But let me read you as I go. Matthew 6. 14 and 15. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men for their sins, your Father will not forgive you. He has given me something in my life that I thought I'd never deal with. And he's presented it in front of me. And as you can see, it's still emotional. And it still brings tears to my eyes. But let me tell you that if you carry this on, this ill will, this ill feeling towards somebody, it will only eat at you. And if you do something retaliation, which I promise you it's crossed my mind, if you do something retaliation, it only will make it worse for the people that are already hurt. So there's one, one alternative that we have, people. Forgive. For I have been forgiven and you have been forgiven. For God has forgiven us all. So that we can be forgiven and have everlasting life. Amen. 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 Wow. Next him is on 116. My country is up there.
Christ the healer restore you and the Holy Spirit sustain you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Enjoy your beautiful Sunday.